And then you walk the other way out. Well, that's where that clock went by the um, nuclear clock or whatever. It is seven o'clock. Um, the pond, the basic July 22nd, 2017, border zone appeals for Rackham County uh, meeting to order. Um, so uh, as I open the meeting, I would like to uh, have Mr. Dameron uh, call the roll. Mr. Bird. Present. Mr. Kai. Here. Um, do I need to call these numbers? Yeah, we do. Yes. All right. Ms. Matthews. I'm here. Mr. Anderson. It's not, it's most likely not going to be here. Uh, I got a phone call, a voice message, and uh, it was doubtful because of something that's come up in the emergency. Mr. Sharp. And Mr. Sharp is uh, not At the beach. Is that the beach? Okay. Cool as he is. Okay. So, um, how could he miss this? What? How could he miss this? Um, so, I'd like Mr. Dameron, who's the um, zoning, the new zoning administrator, to introduce himself. I think I know everybody here, but my name is David Dameron. And he's zoning administrator. And he's acting secretary for, slash clerk for the DCA yes. for right now. Right. Uh, I'd, like to get to he was I'd like to make an announcement that the Dodd Tourist Home SU 17 05 08 has been withdrawn. So that application was withdrawn this afternoon. And if there's anyone here, who wanted to make any comments? We're not opening for comments or hearing, so you can exit if you wish. The second thing is that um, there are three members here. Anytime that the VCA is uh, uh, in session, uh, there has to be an affirmative vote of at least three members that is required for any uh, decision that, and determination that we make. And so we have the uh, Windsor Lodge Stables, the LLC Tourist Town, the number of uh, special use 170505 is, is here. Uh, the, the family's here as well as their attorney. And so they have the choice to, that we would hear it or if we want, if we want to make the continuance, we can do that until next month. Mm -hmm. we, we, don't, we, we, we have given that, op that opportunity before. But if you don't get three votes for that, you're not going to get it. <laughs> so, um, Mr. Brown, do you want to continue forward? It, yes, uh, yes, Dr. Matthew, thank you. We, we, would, we would like to move forward okay, this then, evening. Then, so, all right, then, then the, uh, we've had our call to order, so we need to adopt adopt the agenda knowing with, with the realization that we've got one withdrawal and we will hear the second Windsor uh, uh, well, Madam, Madam Chairman, I would like to make a motion that we amend this agenda and add two items. Uh, the first item, we, I mean, I heard what you said before. Uh, I think that uh, our secretary that we elected is the secretary until she either resigns or dies or is replaced. And to my so knowledge, none of those three things has happened. So I think uh, one of our first orders of business uh, is that we need to designate someone as the acting secretary formally, because only the board can do that in my view. Uh, and um, I think we ought to have that because somebody's got to put the ads in the paper and have the authority to do all that sort of administrative stuff. And uh, so I, I would propose to add that. And probably the res resolution of it would take shorter than it just took me to propose put on the agenda. Okay. And the second thing that I would like to put on the agenda is this uh, Freedom of Information Act uh, Advisory Council opinion which came out today that involves this board based on an inquiry, and I would just like to take maybe five minutes and summarize what's in it. I mean, I don't think we're going to probably take any action on it tonight, but I would like to inform the board and the public what is in it and what happened, so I'd like to put that under new business as the first thing. 
because also it also involves the notice um, procedures that the board's been following, and I think it has some really good guidance in it so that we don't make any further mistakes and have to inconvenience people by continuing hearings and postponing them and re-advertising and all that. Okay. So I like to put those on. That's my motion. Okay, so we'll take each of the, each one at a time. So, yeah, Art, do you have anything to order for the agenda? Any no, I do not. Okay, so the first uh, item is that we would add uh, election of a secretary to the BCA. All in favor? Aye. Okay. The second item is that we uh, allow Mr. Connick to talk a little, uh, five minutes, and we will time that. And um, <laughs> the new business uh, <laughs> about. Uh, a document that he received not but an hour or so ago. Okay, so we could do that, or that could be continued to the following month. So we, to, we have a motion on there, we need a second to that. Second. Okay, so all in favor say aye. Aye. Um, I'm going to abstain. So, so we can we will put that on the agenda. Um, so I would, I would propose that we uh, go ahead and elect a secretary so that we have official. We have someone who can take the minutes. Right. Very good. Well, my question to Mr. Dameron is the same question I asked the previous one. Do you want to do it? Do you have time to do it? Um, <laughs> I will attempt to do it, yes. Uh, well, sorry. Well, so, our dis so the discussion is he said he would do it. There is, we are looking to see if, if we can, can hire a secretary for right. us, an independent secretary. And so I would ask Mr. Gary if he thought that if for, until for an interim, would, would that would that work for you until we get other um, um, personnel in place? I'm I'm willing to do that if the board so chooses. Um, you know I do think they do need a permanent office. So okay, but so I'm so, willing to do that. So we so um, then we could. Unless y'all have a cabinet. No, no, right. that was that was in the works before, right. and then with the, all the transitions that we've had recently, it's um, we've got to start that. that That's yeah. sort of my question. What happened to that? Because I thought we voted in April, add that money into the budget, and we had a big discussion about it. And honestly, I don't <coughs> know if that I think it was two thousand dollars or fifteen hundred, whatever it was. Did did that actually get put in the budget? Do you know? I do not know. I do not know. Okay, I don't know either. So, so, so we know. need to follow up on for the for the budget for that. Okay. All right. well, so all in favor yeah. of having Mr. Dameron be a secretary tonight and the interim secretary until we sort through we'll some of these. Or something or another. And your feelings won't be hurt if we get another person. They will not. Okay. <laughs> so all in favor of Mr. Dameron. That without right. stipulation, I'll vote. The, yeah. last, the last time I voted. Okay. 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 So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. <laughs> Mr. Secretary. Okay. So then, uh, in uh, we do not have minutes for adoption. They are being uh, created right there, being uh, written up right now. The we it's listed here as a public comment. In the BZA, our public comment period generally comes with each application, and so after the uh, applicant uh, presents the. Um, uh, application and, and their intent, then the board asks some questions and then we open it for public con comment. So and we're going to continue that this evening. Well, so. I have a comment on that, Madam Secretary, and that is all the other boards in the, in the whole county do have a public comment period. The Planning Commission's got it, as Mr. Berg knows, and I don't see why we don't have it. I mean, if, I mean, probably there's not going to be so much public comment, but sometimes there might be. Well, why can't we do that? Then as, we, we, as we move forward and we uh, solidify our um, procedures, we can look at that. But for right now, we're going to with the applications. Mm -hmm. It's a separate agenda. Well, yeah, I thought it was not to be agenda. It's on there. So on there. why don't you just ask if there's any public comment? I bet the answer is going to be no. Yeah, I have public comment. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> oh, good. Well, come on. Let's have public comment. Who are you seconding? Uh, I'm happy to have public comment. Okay. Then we will open for public comment before we take our applications. If you, if you have public comment, you need to stand and um, state your name clearly. And oh, everything I think we're, we're uh, recording.
coordinate here, right. and then it's also on video over here. So this one is much more. Yes. Can I give you my um, comments so you have a copy of it? Sure. tourist homes events and agribusiness. Dear BZA members, the purpose of this letter is to endorse applicants for tourist and event permits and rent the county. Now that there's a push for more distillery and breweries by the county, there needs to be more affordable short-term rentals for visitors. Quality tourist homes enable visitors to have reunions or share, share with their friends. By splitting the cost, they can still afford to spend their dollars on agribusiness, recreation, food, and spirits. We only have a fraction of the tourist homes needed to accommodate agribusiness events and the new push for more distilleries and breweries in the counties. Yay, small business. As such, I would like to endorse Heidi and Desmond God, who are not here yet, and Susan Collins' tourist home applications at the July Museum here. And until last week, our statute regarding the issuance of permits for tourist homes was very clear. Five acre properties and agricultural locations are permitted to apply. These two applicants have upheld the standard of our law and they have spent considerable time and money to give the county money. Now David Connick wants to change the ordinance back to 10 acres, which is a matter for the courts to decide. Mr. Goff had properly wrote an opinion, which will make it unlikely that the Dodds will get a hearing at all, let alone a fair hearing. They live on five acres. The job of elected and appointed officials is to grant permits and explain to the public why an applicant meets the standards for the applicable law. That really is their only job with respect to rental and event permits. If county officials are not abiding by the laws of the county and state, they are breaching their fiduciary responsibility and encouraging unnecessary expense through appeals, which they will rightly lose. By not following the rule of law themselves, elected and appointed officials are encouraging citizens to behave in the same way. With respect to events over the years, Bill Fletcher and Susan Connolly have contributed much to the county and they have a right to make a living on their land in a way that is in compliance with county statutes. Why should they pay for everyone else's open space? If they are illegally prevented from doing so, their land will be sold and cut up, and the 25-acre rule will be over in a blink. Heidi and Desmond God are wonderful people. They have an ideal property for a tourist home, and they want to support the sale of agribusiness and events. So do Susie Connolly and Bill Fletcher. Thirty years ago, Rappahannock County was a welcoming place and encouraged diversity through farming, events, art, music, and outdoor recreation. When the market crashed in 2008, so did our property values. In response to the big recession, other destination getaway communities increased their budgets for tourism. Rappahannock, Rappahannock defunded its Office of Tourism. Loud and Falkier land values have recovered. Rappahannock land values have not. I would propose the following. We need to increase tourist homes to support current and future events, which in turn will generate significant revenue to promote agribusiness, maintain the beauty that we love, which is why we live here and why people want to come. Pay elected appointed officials a proper stipend for their time and expertise, and elect people who are qualified and agree to a term limit. As a result, we the people can hold our elected officials accountable for their representation of us. This is certainly not true today, as evidenced by David Connick's latest sneak attack on tourist home applicants. Mr. Connick was appointed to uphold the law and be impartial. Applications for tourism and B&B permits should be a simplified process whereby the applicant agrees to follow applicable county law and no statutes are listed in all applications. Actively court tourism oriented events streamline the process and work with applicants to ensure that, that, that events will comply with county statutes and guidelines. And five, Make decisions based on law, not politics or personal agendas. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chairman, since my name was in both place in that little comment, I'd like to respond just a little. Well, I'm up in But you're about this board right now. You're not going to let me respond? No. I'm not going to let you respond right now. It's not, it's not in order. I, I think it is in order. The board supervises everybody else that has public comment. You have a, a period to respond, especially if somebody attacked me. 
You're not going to let me respond? I move that I be allowed to respond. What do you say, Mr. Byrne? I move that we continue with our agenda. <laughs> so the next item on the agenda is new business and it is Windsor Lodge Staples LLC Tourist Tone SU 17 0505. And so um, the applicant is here, as is Mr. Brown. Would you like to come forward? And we need to have two chairs. Oh, we need to stand. I'll be happy to stand. Uh, Dr. Matthews, if that's, if that's okay. okay. And normally, we, we swear in the uh, the, appellate, the, the, the applicant, but we don't have to swear in with you. All right. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice Chair. But I'm what you say is going to be true, the whole truth. Yeah. Okay. I, I did. Uh, my name is Michael Brown. I'm an uh, attorney with the law firm Walker Jones with offices in Warrington in Washington, Virginia. I, I believe we all, uh, everybody here is familiar with me. I represent the applicants on Mel Farm uh, and Windsor Lodge Stables in connection with the tourist home application before you this evening. Uh, Ms. Coomley and her daughter Stephanie Gorham are principals in the LLCs and are here this uh, evening as well to answer any questions that may arise. Uh, as described in the application materials, the, the uh, tourist home use is uh, involved in a one and a half log story home uh, located on the Olnell Farm property, which consists of approximately 432 acres, uh, there, uh, thereby uh, eliminating any concern regarding the minimum acreage requirement uh, that's been the topic of discussion recently. Uh, the application describes the uh, proposed use as one uh, house has one large bedroom, two bathrooms, and a sitting room with a sleeper sofa. Uh, it will accommodate a maximum of four people comfortably, and that's the limit of the application uh, that's before you this evening uh, for uh, individuals. Um, I, I would just like to address briefly the additional standards uh, for review under uh, sec Section 66K of Section 170 of the Rappahannock County Code. Uh, given the, the proposed number of guests, four, uh, that's well within the 12 uh, limit standards set, limits set forth in that standard. Uh, Off-street parking uh, immediately in the vicinity of the log cabin is located well outside the front yard requirement. Uh, in the application materials and a full-size copy of the uh, drawings that Mr. Clark has prepared are available over there for review. Uh, you can see that the property is located, by my calculation, roughly a third of a mile uh, off of Jericho Road down a private uh, driveway. Uh, the parking is immediately adjacent to that block cabin, so it's well outside any kind of uh, uh, front yard or side yard. Requirements. Uh, the the uh, proposed use is located in, a, in an existing home and it's a log cabin that so, uh, appears to be a residential structure, thereby uh, satisfying additional standard number three. Uh, we've already addressed the acreage and requirement in additional standard four. Of course, breakfast meals uh, will be on only be served to paying guests. There's no uh, provision to uh, sell uh, meals to, to uh, other individuals or the public in general. And that satisfies standard number five. Uh, and the driveway, uh, Windsor, Fall, Windsor uh, Lodge Lane, uh, which serves this uh, this house, is located within a 50-foot wide right-of-way uh, that crosses the Windsor Lodge Stables property, uh, and therefore is, uh, satisfies additional standard number uh, six. As I indicated, uh, Ms. Coomley and Ms. Norm are here this evening to answer any questions. Uh, we had, I think, approximately uh, uh, half a dozen uh, members of the public rise to speak at the uh, Planning Commission meeting. Uh, all of those neighbors and all of them spoke in favor of this application, so we hope that we uh, meet with your approval this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, do you have any questions? I do not. I've got a couple of questions. One is, Mr. Brown, did I hear you to say that it's going to be limited to four people at a time? Yes, uh, that's correct, Mr. Brown. Okay. And uh, the the right-of-way, isn't that property all owned by the same people, or no? No, sir. The the, the, the right-of-way crosses the Windsor Lodge Stables property. That's the front portion. If you, if you refer to Mr. Clark's schematic, it indicates that. Um, and, and then crosses over onto the Olnell Farm property. And Windsor Lodge Stables is a co-applicant in, uh, in this application. So basically, the road is all on the property of the applicant. One or the well, other. one or the other, yes, sir. Not for that. I, I thank you for correcting me. Yeah, not not the all L farm property. I just want to be clear. Okay. So there's five LLCs. It's not there. So I guess technically it could be sold to some other owner at some point in time. Yes, sir. And what kind of a road is that? What's built on the right of way in other words? Uh, it's what I would describe as a as a typical uh, driveway. Property. I, I don't know. I believe that there's a there is a, at least one photograph of the of the roadway in your materials. Is it hard pavement or is it? Um, it it's pavement and then it goes to gravel. 
Okay. Where, does it go, where does it go to ground? On, your, on, the, on the same oh, track? Oh, on our same. It's on the, I mean, on the track where the log cabin is, that's where it turns in the ground? No. Before. 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 Yeah. And how long end. is that all together? From the road all the way into the log cabin? It's about a third of a mile. Okay. <clears throat> no, I have any other questions? I have a quest question. What kind of signage will you use? Will there be any signs? No. So people who are coming know where it is, yes. even though it may not be on the GPS. <laughs> We're going to put um, in the, on the invitations. No, do not. not okay, we'll, we'll actually, I'm going to do like social media, and I'll put directions on how to get there. Okay, so it'll, it'll be advertised. <clears throat> okay, with directions. Here. All right, and then um, is there any? I don't know that there would be any issues with lighting. But is there any, you know, usually in the county we like to have down lights and that kind of thing, so we're concerned with the, with the dark, sky. dark skies. Yeah. Right. Yes. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. going to be. Yeah. Active. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Bird, can you give us a summary of what occurred at the planning uh, commission? Yes. Uh, uh, to repeat, Mr. Brown, uh, there were numerous neighbors. Uh, the ones that I <clears throat> was uh, uh, all of the neighbors at the meeting were uh, in favor of the application, and uh, so that it didn't seem that there was any uh, particular problem that way. And the uh, discussion was basically uh, non-existent because of that, and it was approved. Recommend. Uh, recommend. Okay, so it's recommended. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Um, I'm going to open for this application for pu uh, public hearing now. Is there anyone who would like to speak either for or has concerns about the application that's been presented by Ms. Coonley and Mr. Brown? I'm in, I'm in favor of the application. So, you have to state your name and the district. I'm Lynn Sullivan, Hampton District, and I'm in favor of. The application. Thank you. Anyone else have comments, concerns? Okay. We'll close the public hearing for the app this application. So um, we can have a discussion among ourselves. Um, I don't know. I, think, I mean, I think. Uh, I guess one question I didn't answer now, do it now is: Do you have a problem if we limit this to the current ownership? I I, I don't have any problem with that, Mr. Connick, except that I don't believe that that's consistent with the legal standards that apply to special use permits. I, I typically, I think they they do run with the land, uh, but in this well, case, we've done it in some in some cases. We've done it in others. We have. So I'm just asking: Do, you, do they have? I mean, my concern is this, I'll tell you flat out, it's the, it's the fact that the other track through which the right-of-way passes could conceivably be conveyed to somebody else, and then you might not have, well, who knows, the family members might get in a fight, that, that never happens. But anyways, you know, some, some of the circumstances could change, so they could object to it, so um, that's my... That's what I'm thinking about. Uh, obviously, whatever pleases the board and, and you know. And, well, I mean, you, you, if you're not going to object to it, I guess maybe we could just go do that. Okay. And do you have a problem if we would ask that it be, I mean, my sense of it is, as long as it's in the current ownership, it shouldn't have to come back for review. But, I mean, that's another way we could do it, is that if the ownership of either track changes, or at least ways the track through which the right of way goes, so the, the one that's closest to the road. But it, it's a, it's a legally established right of way. Yes. Well, it is. That's right. Yes. But I mean, they might have neighbors at some point that object to it, and I would just say maybe they don't have a right to you know be heard or have it reviewed and say there is no neighbors. Right? Well, no, I mean if you but if you sell one of the other tracks, I'm saying the one day LLCs changes hands. Well, it's in my estate. You know the five the LLC. So it's the way the land. Right. So, so, but, so you don't live there? I don't want to go back. No, but my sister and I are on it. So. What? It goes to my two doors. Where it's our What if they get in a fight and one of them says? Well, 
Oh, and the builder must be. All right, that's all the questions that I had. I make a motion to approve it, subject to uh, subject to review, if uh, uh, and, and subject to us making the findings. But uh, but I could make a motion that we that all the findings are satisfied, um, and that we approve this subject to um, a review in some period, and I'll leave up to the board members if if there's a change of ownership. Comments, Mr. Bird. It would seem to me in this situation that the change of ownership business is not really necessary because any new owner would have to buy knowing that the uh, special use is in existence. Well, they might not, according to you. It's completely unnoticeable. <laughs> well, I mean, know. we could worry about meeting your strikes, too. Yes. But, uh, All right, I'll amend my motion and just okay. move that we approve it without any condition. Right, is, yeah. is there a second to approving it? Sure. All right, we have the, um, for the, to move it further, we have uh, Mr. Brown went through the um, section 17066K, the six uh, items that are for the standards for tourists. Bed and breakfasts and boarding homes has been a tourist home. Do we need to re read those or can we read that? I make a motion that we make all those findings as well as the one in section 170 52 A through 11 or whatever they are. Um, the general standards. So the general, the 52, that's the general uh, standards. I just don't think there's any issues about it. Yeah, the, the general standards are about that there's adequate. Of parking, um, the impact, and the size of the buildings, and so forth. So, mm -hmm. okay. Issue on four hundred and four four thirty four thirty right. acres. Okay. So then I will. The adequate parking for four. And a second to that that motion. Second. All right. Aye. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. And aye. So we have three members. We have a, a quorum, and we have a um, unanimous. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you'll need to. Uh, you can stop by and see the layout. It's on the administrator. All right, and 25 minutes now. I'm going to live to be 120. Set it on. What year will that be? Maybe come back and go. Okay. Brown needs a bill. All right. Thank you all. Thank you all. We had. Under new business, we added an item, and that item was brought forward by Mr. Kahn about uh, a document that he has received recently, and so he has a few minutes. Thank you. Uh, uh, Madam Chairman and member of the board and ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've had some issues in court and county appeals. I think we've had six meetings, maybe seven, in the last year that had to be canceled or postponed because of improper notices. And uh, in addition to those six or so meetings, we had three meetings this year in which I wrote a letter to the board and advised the board at the meeting that I didn't think we had complied with the uh, Freedom of Information Act requirements because of notices that are required to be sent out to various people pursuant to uh, Section 2.2-3707E. <coughs> That's the people who've requested the zoning office to send them notices of our meetings. Didn't get them in a timely way. The notices were sent on Sunday. In one case, they weren't sent till Tuesday of a Wednesday meeting. And so I pointed that out and pointed out that there's an attorney general's opinion that says uh, if you violate FOIA, that any actions that you take at that meeting are uh, void ab initio. And not so the permits that were issued would thus be invalid. And uh, uh, all three times the board voted to go ahead and have a meeting anyway. And so we've issued, to my knowledge, at least four permits, which are uh, um, Taylor and Callaway and Andrews and uh, last time was uh, Ms. Estes. Uh, we issued those permits at meetings for which in this letter opinion that came out today, advisory opinion that came out, uh, the notice was deficient and uh, therefore the permits are deficient. So I want to bring that to the attention of the board and uh, 
I think that what we ought to do, and maybe we'll do it tonight, I don't know whatever the political board is, but I think we ought to direct the zoning administrator, our new secretary, to re-advertise those and send out the notices. The notices for the planning commission were okay, so no one would have to come back here. To my recollection, all four of those things, not anybody from the public showed up and, you know, had, had any comment, pro or con, in any of them. And uh, so I think it would be sort of perfunctory, but I think we owe it to those people because right now uh, they could have a neighbor theoretically move in in five or ten years and since uh, at least one member of the public is so concerned about sneak attacks of people who actually want to right. see the law apply okay. what could happen is somebody could move in next door to one of those people and say I object to that use being done there and if it was void ab initio their permit is invalid and it could still be brought up so I think we ought to re-advertise and redo those permits in accordance with this but if you want to do it tonight do it tonight if you don't Comments, Mr. Byrne? What I would suggest is that we wait until we have a uh, meeting of the full board. Okay. And That's uh, deal with it then. Okay. I agree with that, and I believe that we need to have our county officials go back, look at, at the, the, these uh, meetings that are in question, and uh, perhaps even at the meeting that we uh, work with. Well, where we would um, come forward with this is perhaps have the county attorney with, uh, and or his opinion before uh, to uh, validate this. And I, I know that this, I saw the, the, just glance through that from the uh, Virginia FOIA, but we want to make sure that all the information, all the facts are correct and there, and that then we can uh, analyze it and then make a, make a decision as a full board. Okay, I move to do that. Okay, then we will do that, and, and um, perhaps we can do that in August. Do we have anything that you know that's coming up on the agenda in August? Will the conference center come up in August? No. There are several applications, but I'm still receiving those. What, what conference center? Uh, the Virginia Board of Planning Commission. Well, no, not Fletcher. That's not us either. That's the Board of Supervisors. That, 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 that's Board of Supervisors, even though some of that information is in our packet, it just all got switched together. So that would not be coming before us, that's correct. Um, so uh, I believe that I will uh, we'll, we'll look to see how busy our schedule is for the, for the 23rd, and we can put it on there as well as some other items. Or I don't know that maybe we would need to have an additional meeting uh, uh, after the 23rd, another uh, in between the meeting, in order to be able to look at all of these things. But we will have in the very short future. Um, so within the next month, it looks like we will put this on to two months, and we will be able to, to discuss this. All right, so we'll just put it on the agenda for the next meeting, and you'll let Mr. Goff know. I mean, I sent Mr. Goff the opinion, so he's okay. aware of it. But if you're going to, if the board's going to ask him, and that's what be a part of the motion, to ask Mr. Goff to address whether he wants to and if he wants agree to or disagree, and then he can fight. Okay, so, we, so we do that now. Do that it tonight, would, but exactly. Here. Let's it authorize this It would seem nice to have everything set, set. for okay. the meeting. Right. We would, we would need to do that anyway. Okay. Right. I mean, I just feel like the people who, they didn't know anything about it, or they didn't know anything about it, it's not their fault. And they came to the thing and got their permit, and if there's some defect in it, I think it's up to us to cure it and do it as quickly as possible, because some of them, I'm really not sure of all the circumstances, but people, they might be spending money thinking they've got a valid permit, only to find out they don't. And so, yeah, I think it, this is... I think we have to do it expeditiously if we can. Yeah. So, so what we have decided is to uh, ask, get the legal opinions and from the, from from the, and from and the, the facts from the county officials, and uh, we will hear it, uh, put it on the agenda for the August meeting. Okay. Great. All right. Mm -hmm. Any other? So there's nothing, no, nothing else on our agenda. So move to adjourn. I will move to take a. Uh, Thank you all for coming. Thank you.